listen of to you. <laughs> Welcome everyone. Are you guys to another fuck exciting episode of Feel Real Fun? That's right. This oh, is no. really fun. of April twenty twenty one. That's right. Real fun. Yes, that's right. <laughs> Real great. And it's your manifesting questions answered live. You know, because the alternative blows. Think about it. Mm. You always say that. So go to freenable.com. Well, it's always true. Well, no, you don't always say that. You often say, because the alternative sucks. Yes. (laughs) (laughs) Sucks or blows, you tell me which is worse. (laughs) So go to freenable.com. Join our 221 email list. What is it? Suck and or blow? get a pseudo random email every single day until you or 20 dies. Yeah, we just think about that. I and mean, they always say the power of words. Join you our suck. 90 day adventure at manifestingmasterycourse.com. Let's escape the nine. Uh, uh, cheap ass cup of coffee, half a donut. Oh, let's 97 put it, bucks, 90 days. Let's put it there too. <laughs> Great. And for refunds, visit our YouTube channel, feelitrealfun.com. All right, Victoria. So, yes. welcome to another exciting episode. Yes. <laughs> You're right. I think that's the perfect distance right there. Really? <laughs> I feel very there. <laughs> I see I'm right that Victoria's right. Mm. All right. Let me so, cross my leg. Yep. Oh, like a lady. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> uh, all right. So, Victoria. <laughs> so. Let us dive in. We're going to dive in. All right. And our first one is from Dream Driven Day. Tommy. I'm so thankful that Tommy actually gave us a question today. <laughs> Why? Uma. <laughs> and Tommy had a manifest with gratitude. Oh, oh I'm so like that's psychic. why you're thankful. <laughs> yes. How cool was that? I mean, I am so cool. <laughs> Tommy asks, how to feel the feeling of gratitude in a way that would imply my desires fulfilled? I'm not hyping yourself up with words. How do we let this be easy and natural and speedy? First of all, Dark Mockery just shared the video. Thank you. Oh, Dark Mockery, right. you're ace. <laughs> Seriously, you are ace, not ass. Right? <laughs> Let's just make sure you get words have power, E-C-E-A-S-S, right? Quite different. <laughs> right. Of course, you know, it's fun when you walk up to someone every day and you go, hey, ace, right? <laughs> After all, they wonder, like, what's he talking about, right? <laughs> so this whole thing with the gratitude, hmm. right? See, here's what I notice. A lot of people try to talk themselves into things, right? They try to make a big deal about things. Mm. (laughs) Oh, I'm so thankful I got a car, right? (laughs) That I don't have to walk. You know, it's it's that thing where... Well, you would have been really grateful <laughs> to have a car instead yeah. of yeah, the Yeah, instead, road, of, the instead of the shit car. Right, right. And but, that would but, have been real. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it was exciting getting the car. but like the It whole wasn't thing exciting of, for me. <laughs> but the, the whole thing of having the car, it's like, yeah, it's fun. I mean, I'm thankful that I can go up and down Tickle Belly Hill with Emmett, but it's not like I have an orgasm about it every day. No. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's sort of like... Uh, just grateful I'm not breaking down every day. <laughs> you know, Getting it, it's, towed it's, home. It's, it's that relief of possession. <laughs> yes. Right? So, so here's what I notice: a lot of people they want to go around. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Like I, I mean, I'm going to get sushi today. I'm not going to say thank you, thank you 700 times. Mm. I mean, all I got to do is like experience. What would I experience if I had a good lunch with Victoria? Thank God for the rice planters. Thank God thank for the God thank God for, for the rice the planters. Slices. <laughs> yeah, there's that whole thing of like. Yeah, you know, affirmations light up the feel-good centers of the brain, and so does a lot of other dumb shit, right? But at the end of the day, like, like I'm seriously thankful that I know who I am and how this works, and uh, like I'm thankful I get to go to the pool. But notice how you're naturally thankful. We'll tie this in more later. But I just want to start with this whole thing of like artificial thankfulness. Like, I'm so thankful you're my wife. Right? Like, seriously, if I wake up every day and say that to her, like, what the fuck's going to happen in her head? Right? Much less... You're we're, we're, thankful? Like. Yeah, I'm thankful you're still here. You're still my wife. Yeah. So. You should be. <laughs> With comments like that. Yeah, yes. Exactly. So, I'm thankful to have a friend like you. <laughs> yeah. But, but uh, let's keep going. We'll tie okay. in with some other ones, right? <clears throat> I, that's what I love about the Friday shows. You do you? Yeah. That oh, that they all weave. <laughs> Like a tapestry. All right. (laughs) So that was for Dream Driven Day. Dream Driven Day, Tommy. Thank you very much. No, next comes next. Dream Driven Day, Tommy. Thank you for your question. Oh, that's right. 
The next question is from Two Time Tommy. Two Time. I can't surrender. I can't surrender. Tommy asks, what are some fun, simple questions I can ask myself to, su to, to surrender to the feeling of the wish fulfilled or just surrender into my desire states that invite me to experiences? Questions that my rational mind can't interfere with because I'm tired of getting stuck in my head and giving head answers. I'm sick of it. Any help? Any help? I don't think I know how to surrender. Yep, I suspect you're afraid of getting lost. Mm. The head wants to control everything. What, what's the question? What's the answer? Yada, 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 mm. yada, yada. Mm. yada. Uh, you get to lose yourself in the state of your wish fulfilled. You really get to get lost. So my question is, what do you like when you get lost? Especially mm. if you've got like a time limit. Right? It's like i got to be at the doctor's at 2 o'clock. <laughs> oh. right? and, and it's one fifty-five. And it's 10 to 2, and, yes. And you're lost, right? I mean, you don't know <laughs> yeah. where, where you are. Mm. Ah. R. I remember I got lost <laughs> once driving a car. Once? Crumbs when I was about 20 or something in the western suburbs. And I totally freaked out. It was just like, yeah, yeah. really, if I thought about it, hang on, I'm in Melbourne. It's like, where are you going? You know, I, it, it's, there's a limit to how lost I can become. But it just showed how I just totally freaked. I got scared. I was yeah. just like, what? If you get lost, if you're in downtown Pittsburgh, somebody write this down, mm -hmm. and you get lost, just don't cross any bridges. <laughs> Right? It's, it's a triangle for fuck's sake, right? If you cross a bridge, then you go like way out in the middle of nowhere maybe. But you know, if you get lost in the city of Pittsburgh and you want to stay in the city of Pittsburgh, you don't cross any bridges. On the other hand, <clears throat> right? if, you want to, if you want to go someplace else, you cross a bridge and you discover new territory. <clears throat> so the head never wants new territory. The head wants to stick with ABCs. You know, the, the, the head likes rational numbers. Yeah. Right? Uh, when you start getting into irrational numbers and math with variables, oh my God, the variables are where the fun is. So we'll tie this in more later, but what I want you to do is just notice what happens when you're lost because you really get to lose yourself into something new. And to do that, you've got to get okay with being lost. And the head is not okay with being lost. That, I mean, it's absolutely nothing like it. But remember that book, it was really bizarre for me that you were reading for a while. Was it called The Dice Man? Or something? Oh, The Dice Man. Yeah, 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 yeah. And like, fun. <laughs> and it was like, no matter what he did, he chucked <laughs> the dice. It's like, oh, okay, I'll go this way or, oh, okay, I go to bed with this woman. Or, yeah, absolutely. He lived his like, entire life by... <laughs> by the throw of a dice. And it was just by, like, by the way, she didn't whoa. even read. She didn't even read the book and you know, so it does her in. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Sweet, right? Yeah. <laughs> okay, cool. <laughs> Let's keep going. All right, See excellent, happens. Tommy. This is going to be so good. <laughs> Thanks for your question. By the way, what happens when... You know, so all your friends work nine to five jobs, 40 hours a week. They spend two hours a day in a car going back and forth. Mm -hmm. They're not making the money that they want because they can't make the money that they want because they're spending too much money on the apartment they're never in and the car going that they... Going to work two yeah, hours and, a day. And, and the car to drive to back and forth, <laughs> yes. right? Versus like, I mean, you could really you know, explore... You know, like most people would be lost in my day. God, I, I, I couldn't fathom trying to function with. So I sit in traffic when? <laughs> for two hours? I listen to the news? Mm. I go to work from nine to five? Yeah, like, yeah. I, I, all those constraints are driving me nuts versus, yeah. Yeah, I've got a lot of loose time to get lost every day. <laughs> yeah, because it's like... To go to work from nine to five means I've got to get up at six to have my coffee until seven to have my exactly. shower and get in the car and go drive to work. And it's like all Why of a sudden. Would you squeeze sex in? <laughs> well, yes. <laughs> Ten o'clock at night? No, sorry, I've got to so, be so up at six. It all depends with who, right? If you're having sex at work, it'd be between nine and five. But yeah. anyway, okay. <laughs> all right, let's keep going. <laughs> Excellent. The next question's from Carolyn. Yo, Mel. The Sabbath. 70 times 7. <laughs> Carolyn asks, how do I get into the Sabbath with a lot more ease? And why it only takes one or two sessions for some desires and a lot more sets for some others? Yeah, I can almost guarantee the second, the more, the more, right? They're probably going to be more problem oriented. Yeah, versus like, uh, you know, it's really easy to surrender to a pizza. <clears throat> People say, oh, Mr. 20, a pizza's not a big deal. Well, it could be. 
right? We could change, we, we, we could do things to you to make pizza a real big deal, right? But it's always, it almost always seems to me when I get the emails about people, they're struggling and so on and so forth. Mm-hmm. They're comparing solving a problem with moving from a hunger to what's to fulfillment, so the whole thing of like, if you doubled your income and you worked half the time, doubled your income, worked half the time again, yeah, it's one way to explore financial freedom. That's one thing. But it's like, well, but Mr. Tony, how do I possibly imagine being debt free and having no mortgage and three houses paid off? And it's like, oh, fuck, man, I don't know. I mean, because yeah. like, what do you really want? What what they really want isn't all that. Uh, my suggestion is just going to be noticing how easy it is to really surrender to a desire's fulfillment compared to what is it like to struggle with the elimination of a problem uh, using yesterday's history and my understanding of reality for tomorrow's problems. Oh, you know, yeah, it just gets yeah. weird, right? <clears throat> so, uh, and it also ties back in with that whole thing of how do you lose yourself? I mean, how do I lose myself in Victoria's Yum? Really easy. You know, how do I lose myself in the, some complicated solving of a yeah that's just gets trying to solve you get it a uh-huh. little weird little complicated back up in the head kind of deal so uh uh-huh. to me that's the big thing right there yeah the sabbath the sabbath is all about surrender and again what's sunday like you ever notice how people get lost on the weekends it's sort of like that whole thing when people go on holidays and they'll go on like a seven day holiday and by day three they're going a little nuts <laughs> yeah, because they don't have their normal orientation, which is shit to complain about, <laughs> you know, <laughs> you know, versus, right, you know, uh, what if you went and explored? I was always big on with a holiday you explore. You don't structure a holiday, but I notice most people structure them, <laughs> you know, <laughs> yeah. yeah, not a fan of yeah. that. So yeah. uh, get lost, taking it way back up toward the top there. Explore being lost. How do you really surrender? How what's it like? Like really, 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 really surrendering and getting lost. But uh, let's keep going. We'll, tie, we'll keep, keep tying this in. This is good. Okay. So thank you, Caroline. I, I think it's good. Do you, do you think it's good? Yeah. Yeah. I all think right. It's I, good. I, I, you don't seem all that enthusiastic about it. <laughs> oh, see, just... when she's not enthusiastic about it, I get a little lost here. I'm like, oh, <laughs> she's not giving me the feedback that I crave. <laughs> Yeah, well, <laughs> the only thing I was thinking was you said it sounded like for the ones that take loads more time that they're like it's complicated or something, and I sure. and I was just thinking big that like, but then maybe that's me. But for the ones that feel like they take so long or hard to nail and hard to surrender to, are the ones that feel bigger than me. So, but yeah, bigger than her in the yeah, head. Yeah, Got it? exactly. You see, you know how small your head is. <laughs> Remember, Neville talked about the head. That's 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 the tomb. Right, you're buried in the tomb. Let's play a game. Has anyone ever been in a tomb? All right, they're not that fucking big. Right? <laughs> yeah, it's the cave. The cave ain't big. Right? Yep. When you get stuck in the head, there's a reason. For, for, you know, I, I, all my metaphors are very intentional, and so are my analogies. Right? But, but whenever you think about this, this whole head thing, it's like, yeah, you know, it really does get, yeah, you know, like like a ping pong ball bouncing back and forth, mm. versus you know, home run just goes way out there so but i'm with you very cool that's right okay carol <laughs> very cool thank you <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, next question is from uh, shanita self-concept versus identity based <laughs> shanita asks so i want to know is self-concept the same as identity-based manifesting? I don't know. Let's make some stuff up. Ready? So identity-based manifesting, manifesting to the max.com, right? Mm. So I live by three primary identities, loving teacher, loving husband, loving puppy dad. Mm. Any of those can experience any emotion at any time. Uh, for those who think states or emotions are stronger than states, that's bullshit. Yeah, come on, right? Really? <laughs> you know, the, this whole thing of your emotions come from your states. Right? Yeah. Now here's the cool thing. You're you're you are the big thing, right? You are what surrenders to states. Inside of states are emotions or thinking or thoughts mm. or reactions, right? So when I look at this whole self concept versus identity based, let's just call identity based things that you can put words to like happy loving husband. 
happy, loving puppy dad, so on and so forth. But self-concept is another interesting one. I'm just going to take this in a really little bit of a different direction. Big or small? What's your concept of you? Are you big or are you small? Are you fragile? Right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yes. Like, like yeah, you know, I got a little case of the sniffles, Vulnerable. right? Yeah. So, so, so we could cancel the show, and I could avoid having people send me a thing like, "Well, Mr. Twenty, if you really fucking believed, you wouldn't get the sniffles, right? <laughs> really? Yeah, <laughs> whatever, yeah. right? Or, you know, like Victoria's not all that enthusiastic about all of my answers today. <laughs> right? Like, I'm like, it's gonna take this really personal because I'm small and I need the stroking of my ego and all that stuff. <laughs> <Right>? <laughs> Right. See, <laughs> so, but but this this concept of self thing is so fascinating because you can go meta with it, right? So I can be loving husband, loving teacher, loving puppy dad, but if loving husband, loving happy husband feels really small, then he's going to be like seeking all this external validation from Victoria. She ain't going to fucking Victoria. give it to me. Do you think she? Do you think she gives validation? <laughs> yeah, look at her. <laughs> look at her. Right. You think she gives validation? <laughs> yeah. How many times have you validated my ticket? <laughs> right. Victoria, I need a ticket validated. <laughs> oh, it's a crappy one. <laughs> no, I'm just having fun. <laughs> no, but think about it. I, if she needed me to validate her ticket all the time, it would drive her nuts and me. On the other hand, hey, 20, what do you think? Or, hey, I'm thinking about this. I think it's smart. I think it's stupid. I think it's like, you know, we have these really grown-up conversations, right? They're called fast, honest, and fun. But here's what's really cool. This whole thing of concept of self. Again, yeah, I really like this identity-based manifesting. To me, they're closely related. But we can really play with the concept of self with things like size. What's your concept right now of you? How big are you? compared to a hundred bucks how about a thousand see i used to rent myself out for the weekends i don't currently i might again someday but i'm not cheap right <laughs> so here's the thing oh mr 20 i'd love to rent you out for a weekend well how small are you feeling you are <laughs> right <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. manifesting mr course.com <laughs> you got it yeah you can play with this stuff in some fascinating ways you can just try to make your life all content oriented mr Man mr twenty twenty i manifested up a hundred bucks to get a manifesting mastery course dot com then i manifested my husband stealing it then i manifested stealing it back now we're getting divorced <laughs> and i'll try to take it next year do you think dream driven day would be a good idea considering getting divorced instead of a divorce driven day it just <laughs> gets, it gets day. so complicated when you're small living in the tomb right versus right Hmm. concept of self you get to discover how big you are by surrendering to states that are smaller than you they're all smaller than you got hmm. it so hmm. that's what i got and again cool. concept of self notice big or small identity based manifesting pick a few goody identities and if you really like this again manifesting to the max.com there's no way that we can put what's in that massive package into a podcast or two or a question or two mm. we can give you some good ideas about it but mm. the training you know another thing 97 bucks <laughs> so <laughs> hey, oh no, what Oh, who's big? Who's a big dog? Who's a big dog? Yeah. Who's a big dog? Who's a big dog? <laughs> All right. Where's Uncle Joe Weldon? Somebody tag Uncle Joe. <laughs> Uncle Joe Weldon. Uncle Joe Weldon. It's me, Brucey. <laughs> All right. So, Uncle Joe Weldon. <laughs> All right. So, Victoria. <coughs> oh, okay. Let, let's do it. So, that was for Shanita. Thank you very much for your question, Shanita. <laughs> what are you doing? <clears throat> the next question's from Barbara, feeling small. Yes. Ooh, Barbara that. asks, hi, 20. Uh, hi. Yeah, <laughs> imagine that <laughs> after all these ones. Though I've spent loads of time in imaginal sessions <laughs> and finding good states, my default state seems to be me being small. Who am I being? In an imagined session, I'm being successful on a... Um, or a loving partner, etc., etc. But who am I being day to day or when I fall down? I'm being a scared, frightened little girl who expects to, a miracle to suddenly save her. I'm experiencing hey. a miracle to save me, and the truth is, it's all me. I need to rescue myself. No one's coming. All right. 
I really like this. You know, this this is from an email. I changed the name to protect the innocent, that kind of thing. Uh, but uh, I just absolutely love this because here's the thing: when somebody puts up a post, I love sharing success stories. And then someone will comment, "Oh my God, it's a miracle! Wow, how did you do it?" <laughs> you get, I, I get that they're are, they're feeling small. Right, this whole thing of small and big, I find utterly fascinating, and and it's showed up in a lot of our shows this past week. You know, that you'll hear the podcast, whatever. But I really want you to get this because, yeah, you know, the universe will give you what you want or something better. So you always finish with this or something better for the good of all involved. Amen. And it's like, fuck, man, no, yeah. right? That is not. Yeah, it's I want a cheeseburger or something better. That could be an ostrich egg. Could be. Yeah, right. <laughs> an ostrich yeah, egg. I can get me an ostrich egg. I want a cheeseburger. I imagine a cheeseburger, but I get an ostrich egg. Dude, hi. Yeah, <laughs> get Bob's. Here, say hi to Uncle Joe. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Now let's go. Come on. One, two, three. See ya. Oh. Bye, Bruce. Okay. All right. Off you go, Bob's. There go we for go. Away. So this, so 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 you really get to just notice these things. And by the way, I want you to get into the habit of this being mundane. <laughs> Mundane. Mundane. I absolutely love Mondays, and I absolutely love my mundane life because it's like I get to go to the pool every day. I get to hang out with her every day. I don't wake up and go, "Oh my God, it's the miracle of miracles!" Here. Right? She's still here. Right? I don't go to the pool and go, "Fuck, man, this is like it is the miracle." I mean, like they would lock me up, right? But I get the truth about me that sets me free. I know exactly what I you know, like. Brucey hanging out. I mean. They, how cool is this, right? The When you really get this stuff, it's like, am I happy when I get success stories? I'm ecstatic when I get success stories. But I don't go, oh, my God, it's a miracle of miracles. You actually pulled it off. Oh, oh, my. Yeah, hopefully this will keep you alive forever, right? So, fuck, man. Cool, that was fun. What's next? Yeah, there, there's the difference. If it's the miracle of miracles, yeah. Yeah, how small are you? Versus, oh my God, I'm just having so much fun. Yeah. <laughs> Boom. Victoria's making tomato chutney. Green tomato chutney. Green tomato chutney. All right. She, she imagined like maybe making a little batch. She wasn't sure how many tomatoes are out there and so on. I thought maybe 100 grams. <laughs> right. So, so like, like now this is where I play. Because I go, I just <laughs> should make a jar. Right, hundred grams of tomatoes would be a jar. Right, not a, not I'm a fan not of, even. I'm not a fan of her making a jar, or half a jar of chutney, right? Because if she's going to put in that much work, you know, it's it's the same amount of work for hundred grams versus a kilogram, right? Mm. You just sort of smash a little more. <laughs> so I imagine her making a massive batch, and, and of course I come home and she's like, "You'll never guess what I found." <laughs> <laughs> One and a half kilos of green tomatoes. Boom. So yes. So, <laughs> yeah, instead of making it about the miracle of miracles, let it be about the mundane. By the way, why do I love Mondays? Most people are going, thank God it's Friday. I get the weekend off. I'm going, thank God it's Monday. I get to hit it. Mm. Boom. By the way, every day for me is a Monday. <laughs> but more on that later. Mm. All right, you guys. Very cool. Okay. Later. All right. So that was for Barbara. Thank you very much for your question. I love where you're playing. This is so cool. Mm. By the way, if you're noticing that you feel small, something bigger than that feeling small is what's noticing. And that's the real you. Right, the silent you, the silence that you truly are, notices all the jibber jabber. The stillness that you are notices all the apparent motion. The vastness that you are notices the smallness that you can identify with in a way that's not useful. Mm. So, mm. dogs. Okay. All right. The next question is from Shanita again. Two time Shanita. Two time Shanita. <laughs> what does revision really do? That's right. Shanita asks. And I had a question about revision. Yes. I just revised a conversation I overheard my daughter's father having about me. Will that conversation manifest or will it just take the pain away from how I felt about what was said? Cool. So, yeah, I don't know what I don't know any of the particulars. So, let, let's just run with uh, vagueness. <laughs> Cuz it's yeah. fun, right? Okay. So, let's let's assume that the conversation that you didn't like felt like this. Right. Mm. Yeah, that you got to worry about something showing up in your future, continuing to linger in your life because of that conversation. Mm. And so you revise the conversation. Like, so I, I, I still remember Camp Hill, prison riots, 89, being 23. I was fucking hot, man. 
I, I had dark hair and everything. <laughs> like, look at that. See, silver I'm fox now. Man. Right? <laughs> yeah. Thank Young you. man spice. See, look at me. I'm feeling bigger already. <laughs> yep. But way back then, you know, that's still a part of my memory. I, I, I did a bunch of revision around that. Yeah, I don't have PTSD anymore, do I? Right? <laughs> <laughs> I'm not that twitchy, right? <laughs> no, I don't think so. I don't, I, I don't think so. Right? Yeah. yeah. But here's the fun thing. Uh, I'm assuming you don't want something going forth into your life in that, from that conversation. So if you revise it, you may or may not remember the conversation, which is cool. But you change the impact that it has in your life. It really changes reality. Mm. Again, imaginal leads, physical follows. Right? So you change some things. That's what's fun for me. Mm. So uh, just notice if you nailed your revision, do you still feel that? Or do you feel, you know, mm. right? You should see what I see. Oh, <laughs> we left the cane. <laughs> yeah, next time. <laughs> okay. <laughs> we got pins. <laughs> Cool. You should see what I see. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so that was for Shanita. Thank oh you very God. much for your question, Shanita. <laughs> Bruce is pushing him off. <laughs> one of us is Emmett, one of us is Bruce. <laughs> anyway. Okay, and the last question today yeah. is from Priya. You know, I'm impatient. That's right. Priya asks, how do you deal with impatience when what you desire isn't showing you up yet in the outer world? Cool. So I could go right into the normal answers, right? Yep. Uh, you're aware of two th your consciousness is the only reality, right? You're, you're, you're conscious of what? What leads the imaginal act and what follows the physical, all yep. that good stuff. And that's all true, right? Mm. But I need that. Oh, okay. So, Sorry. So here's what's really, really cool. We're going to step into the patterns here for a second because this is just too good for me to not pass up. Yep. Unbelievable. Keep typing. All right. All right. <laughs> Ready? <laughs> yes. How do you deal with impatience when what you desire isn't showing you up yet in the outer world, right? So for you guys that were in the club and so on, somebody tag this or maybe, Victoria, we can pull this one out for some advanced training. Mm -hmm. How do you deal with impatience? That's an IU push. Mm -hmm. IU push is... Victoria, how do you deal with when you make a man meal and it's three different kinds of meat and Victoria's, you, know, you get, it's just weird languaging. Yeah. How do you deal with, you know, you know it, it's, it's, it's a question that prevents you from getting the answer, right? What can I do? There's a, yeah. there's a different question. Yep. How could I experience this differently? Again, it, it's a different question How do I deal coming with from a different place, How right? Can I deal with so, so this yeah. is really good. So I'm pointing this out because when you become aware of this, you know, when you when you become aware of this, you'll know whenever you're actually doing an IU push and if it's useful or not. But how do you deal with impatience when what you desire isn't showing up yet in the outer world? Uh, I am aware of, and this is one of my stock answers, but we'll go back into it differently. Your your eyes. Like my eyes are about four inches apart and my ears are about six inches, inches apart. I'm about six foot from top to bottom. I think you're a little shorter than me. <laughs> yes. I can only perceive something like 20 hertz to 20,000 hertz auditorily. You know, I can perceive with my eyes only a small part of the electromagnetic spectrum. Uh, I cannot hear Mark Dockery's voice physically right now. If mm. I called him, I could. In my imagination, I can, but you can perceive so little with your physical senses to say it isn't showing up yet in the outer world uh, is impossible. You have no idea what all is being moved on the chessboard. Mm. Yeah, you have no idea what, what all is being moved on the chessboard. Mm. Uh, so the only thing you got two draw, or well, you got a choice. You can search for signs. Just notice, <coughs> is it happening? There's no way you can tell, right? Hmm. We got our first dog, right? So we were imagining being puppy parents, and we got busy. And then <laughs> suddenly, you know, Andrew brought a dog Plop. over. Then Yasmin brought him back and <laughs> plopped him, right? Yeah. Same thing with Bruce. We were imagining two puppies, never told a soul. I go to the dog park, next thing you know, and you know, second dog dropped off, right? Yeah. All these things had to happen for both dogs to get to us. They were both rescue dogs, right? But I could never say, nothing's happening. Because I perceive so little with my physical senses. So, back to this. How do you deal with impatience when what you desire isn't showing up yet in the outer world? You get all this duality back and forth. 
versus what did I title this? I'm impatient. Mm. There's an honest noticing. Mm. I am impatient. Nobody on the planet has walked around and put them into that, into that state by saying it, affirmations. I am impatient. I am impatient. I am impatient. I am yeah. impatient. You mm. don't get into a hospital by saying, I'm inpatient. Right versus outpatient. Mm -hmm. Again, words don't have power just for those who get stuck there because this will fit in with that too. But this whole thing of like being patient, I'm never patient. I have no patience. I always have shit showing up because I put a bun in the oven and I'm done with it. I put another bun in the oven. I'm done with it. I just ordered before the show two new dog leads. Yeah. Right? It's because th this lady at the dog park has these really cool dog leads. I looked them up. Uh, the guy selling them is charging twice as much as what he's paying for them, right? And it's like, right. I mean, you know, it's like I'm not paying $80 when I can get them for 40 but they're out of stock. Apparently, he bought them all, right? Ah, uh, so like, really? Yeah, so, so it's like I'm not paying 80 for something that should be 40 Yeah. And I'm not waiting because I need one for Emmett now. We do, right? yeah. And so I looked, and I found these other ones that I think are even better, right? So I ordered two of them, one for each dog, right? I've got no patience. And then I noticed the same company. It's Carhartt. You know, you guys in the U.S., you know all about Carhartts, right? So I noticed Carhartt also makes a dog collar, right? So it's like 28 bucks. Mm. And I go, wow. So they make this thing called a small, a medium, and a large. Yeah. Now, we've got two dogs, right? Now, the thing is, to determine whether you need a small, a medium, or a large, right, you have to go measure your dog. Right? I don't have the time to measure my dog. It's like, oh, Victoria, can you find me a tape measure, one made of cloth, one that maybe we can use a piece of cord around their neck then hold it up to the wooden thing. Or just, It's way too complicated for me. Right? <laughs> so here's what I do. Right? I put two buns in the oven. This is like uh, Amazon.com.au is like how I imagine. Right? I don't dick around. I don't wait. I don't spend four hours researching dog leads. Right? Don't mm. have the time for that. Mm. Right? So it's like, ready? Boom. Right? I order two dog leads made by Carhartt. They're really cool. Look them up. Right? I mean, they've got heavy duty latchy things. Right? I, I'm, a, I'm a fan of heavy duty latchy things. Right? <laughs> so I order them. And then I tell Victoria, yeah, we'll have to order the dog lead or the dog Call collars. Us. I'm not bothering to figure all that out today. And then it hits me just order a medium. Because yeah. if I order one medium, yeah. I can try it on both dogs. Yeah. And see if it fits both dogs, see if it fits one dog. If it only fits the smaller dog, I order a large for them. And if it fits none. And if it's the, it, well, it'll fit one out of the two. <laughs> yes, right? that's the, that's the Or maybe two out of the two. Yes. Right? And then that's, we know. That's the beauty of it. So instead side. of dicking around with all this stuff, and it's like, right, well, yeah, Victoria hopefully will remind me to order a dog collar. I'll be patient while I work my way through it. Like, <laughs> just all that stuff there. You notice this all goes back to the head again. Nothing's happening. Right. Mm. Skip the head. You really just get to have experience. And so this whole thing, back to the whole you know, locking it down, I ordered the leads. Ten minutes later, I'm ordering a collar. Same company. right? Mm -hmm. It'll come in a different box probably. But that's the beauty of it all because I never feel like I'm waiting for anything because I'm always ordering something. Mm -hmm. So something is always showing up, like Bruce. Yeah, like you. Bruce is always showing up. Like you. Where's Uncle Joe? He didn't come today. Uncle Joe didn't come did today. That's all right. <laughs> Somebody tag Joe Weldon. So it's, I saw Scott already did. Well, somebody else tag him. All right. right. Well, maybe others did too. But... All right. So yeah, how do you not okay. be impatient? Right. I'm impatient as a state. Right. So like I'm waiting to order what oh. my dogs need. I, I don't wait. I'm not a good waiter. Not a good, not good waiter. Yeah, I'm not a good waiter. <laughs> Am I? He's Dad's a great my... chef, though. That's right. Oh, thank you. I love you. Lick. All right. So, Excellent. Victoria. So, that was from Priya. Thank you very much oh. for your question, Priya. That's right. And, Twenty, thank you for all your brilliant answers oh, today. Oh, my God. I am just incredible today. Yes, you I've are. Got a little bit of the sniffles. A little bit of a sniffle. That's right. After the pool. By the way, you notice how like much I'm letting the sniffles bother me? Because like some people, they're small, and they think the loogie is big, and the loogie might sneak in on a sniffle, or <laughs> you've got the sniffles, you might die, or whatever. It's like, yeah. fuck, man. Really? <laughs> anyway. Cool. So, Victoria. Yes, so what I'd like to know is tell us. What Victoria would like to know. Your hashtag strawberry bit. Victoria. What was your hashtag strawberry bit, babe? Well, my hashtag strawberry bit today. Hi. Yes. I love you, Brucey. 
Uh, just to, as we continue to explore size and so on and so forth, the different ways that it shows up, getting in, stuck in your head really is a great way to stay small. Like this whole IU push thing, that's another way to mm. uh, feel small. Again, when you get the tiny little bit your senses can pick up on, and again, that just tells me almost any time someone dives into I feel small, they're identifying with their body, and then cortisol runs the show and just horrible. You guys in Triple D will be exploring that soon next weekend. Yeah. My hashtag strawberry bit was, yeah, with Priya's last question, because I remember it would be about 10 years ago or now or more when I had my first sort of calls off with you, yeah. coaching calls, and <laughs> you pointed out how I was doing the IU push. Oh, yeah, like I remember that. Every like, question was like, like yesterday. So how do you... It was all you, you, you. And I remember when you, you coached me, and made me aware of it, and it was suddenly like, wow, I do do that. <laughs> and, um, yeah, a lot's changed since then, but it was really enlightening <laughs> when I um, saw that. So thanks for your question, Priya. You know, whenever you, whenever you dip out of that dissociated state, it really, you know, mm. you got to show up in the garden then? Yeah. The garden, you know, you really got to experience the garden from that moment on as more of you pushed out versus. Hmm. <laughs> yeah, I can't even go there, which is cool. <laughs> cool. So that was our strawberry bits. While yes. you type in yours, go to freenever.com. Two to one email list, he says. Pseudo random goodness. <laughs> you doing? Look at that. Oh, yeah. Can you <laughs> Somebody see? gets. I like you seeing your brown yeah. patch. Yeah, it's Bruce <laughs> Join our 90 day adventure at manifestingmasterycourse.com. That's right. Yeah. 97 bucks. How big does that feel? <laughs> um, Identity based manifesting. We mentioned it. Manifesting to the max.com. Yep. Have a look at that one. Oh, uh, another and program. For refunds, visit our YouTube channel. FeelItRealFun.com. <laughs> okay, oh, man. there's a Brucey boy. Oh, he's a Brucey boy. You can see the roto light in his eyes. Oh, Did you see that? Well, uh, Brucey, look here. No, I just want to hang what? my head down. Oh, it just, tired, it just make me tired, Dad. <laughs> I'm getting all relaxed with the tickle on the belly. Okay, I love you guys. You guys have, have a, a lovely weekend. weekend. That's right. We'll catch you Boom. Next week. That's right. Triple D yeah. people. I'll be catching you guys. I'll be posting something later.